Young almost falls down. Throws to the end zone. Oh, it's It will change, and I'm not trying to tell you something. Yeah, it's going to change. It's not like that. Okay, but I want you to understand where I'm coming from. It will change. And it will change because they wanted to change, not, not because of me. It will change because they want to be champions. Smith and a gun with Gore in his left hip. Third down, Alex takes the snap. Alex looking down and Hey people, it's the off season and it's for the cunts. What's up, bitches? Here we are. We're in daddy's lair tonight. Rig at hand. Daddy's feeling the flow. Cat's being a real cocksucker. And the boys are here. What's up? You can always tell when it's the off season. Daddy gets a little <laughs> bit slower with his approach. It's been a while. Those are probably PEDs. <laughs> yeah. Or PD somethings. PDDs. Yeah, we definitely took a long break. I, I think the last time we recorded was uh, before the playoffs even started because mm-hmm. we did a playoff bracket. I actually just remember that. We could, I, think, uh, I think Chris won it. He did? Yeah. That pissed me off because I won <laughs> like the first... <laughs> I won, you dominated the first round? I and won then, every game in the first round. Yeah. And I'm like, I got this motherfucker. Yep. Yeah. And then I realized I picked an all LA Super Bowl. So. Great regular season player you are. Yeah, I'm a real winner. So we have started the off season in um, typical gold blooded podcast form. We show up here to Joe's house, change the location to to record, and we get here. And our laptop that we've used for the last five years did not want to turn on, so we had to what Joe had to send baby up into the attic to pull something down from like 1997. It's, that w- it's from above. Uh, th- this episode could be called Ode to Mimi. So there you go. She she sent a working laptop from above. Otherwise, we would have been recording on an iPhone, but baby saves the day. There you go. Giddy up. Well, I could just get right into injuries. Are there injuries? I, they probably are. Akella, I, don't, I don't have it broken down like I, that. I have an injury. Akella Withers. I have two. Akella Withers and Spoon for that fucking outfit on Instagram yesterday. Okay. And uh, the guy who's the 49er sack leader that died at 70 years old. Uh, I guess death is an injury. I mean, yeah, yeah. the ultimate injury. You, you know, know I had never I mean? even heard his name before, to be honest. I, I was shocked it wasn't Alden Smith, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, I, I just, was trying just, to think, like, didn't Bryant Young have the all time leader in sacks? And I was like, no, because they, they even wrote it. They were like, um, uh, sacks weren't an official stat back when this dude, I don't um, even know his name. What's his name? Nobody knows. Dead. But sacks weren't an official stat back then. But I don't know how they went back and, like, official. Did they go back and watch, watch the game? Watch a bunch of, like, yeah. Fuck out of here. I don't know. Oh, but really? apparently he was the uh, the all-time sack leader ahead of the likes of Bryant Young. Alton Smith? Yeah, I mean, he only played, like, three years, Damn. though. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. It sucks so Cunt. bad. That one is going to burn. Because he was so good. He was so good. And we haven't even had anything and comparable was, since. And he just, he looked, like he didn't really, he never gave interviews. Like, yeah, I can't remember any memorable interviews with him. No, not many. And like, he just looked stupid. But he was a machine. A fucking machine. Yeah. Oh, he was a quarterback fucking machine. Yeah, he was probably, at the time, he was he probably was a like, drinking machine, too. Know. Apparently, of course, like we had like Willis and Bowman and Frank and and all that stuff the at the time. Smith, but like, yeah. like there was always a, a part of me like Alden Smith might actually be my favorite player right now. He just yeah, and I still follow his sister on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you Rob? No, nope. his sister, <laughs> not him though. She no. a drinker? No, black Christian. Loves God. All right, so um, big, I don't, big fan of God. 
Big fan of Jesus Christ. What we're going to do here is because it's been so long since we've been back, there's been a lot that's happened. So Fuck we're just going to do a Fuck rundown. You. Fuck you. Okay. A uh, rundown of all the news and, and things that have come out since we last uh, recorded. Be careful. Steve will reprimand you like he did Kern. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Kern. Yo, I don't know where you get off talking to my man like that. Straight up. It's disrespectful. Do you want to tell the story? No. Just keep, you know. <laughs> we'll no. keep it behind the curtain. Just You've been warned. Curran's got to get his shit together. No, uh, maybe, but show him some respect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't have any, any order in anything. I, I just kind of threw together the stuff that came to mind. Um, first thing I have is the Marquise Goodwin unexplained absence was finally explained. He mm. missed... Mm -hmm. uh, multiple weeks in the season, and we find out it's because his wife loses a set of twins, which was roughly about a year after losing a son due to premature birthing complications. Yeah, hopefully nobody goes back and listens to when I trashed him and said he's a <laughs> pussy and a piece of shit. Yeah, I'm useless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still, I still stand by the fact that he left the game for an it, like the fact that he showed up. I appreciate all that. I understand missing the time. I never questioned him missing any of the time. I did, but the flopping, yeah, the flopping during the game, I had a problem with. Right. To I, be clear, I actually forgot about that. To be clear, I said something super offensive. I hope nobody ever goes back and listens because <laughs> I think about that one statement in particular every now and then. Like, oh man, if any, if if, if thank, this thing, thank I, God we're not anyone. We're not like a person, like I, a personality. Right. No, I think back. I'm like, man, if this thing ever catches fire and somebody goes back and listens to that episode in particular, I'm going to, there's going to, we're going to have to answer for it. Yeah. Like you're, you'll be, <laughs> you'll be in Stephen A. Smith territory. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like, no oh God, no, it was even more, it was absurd. I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck, fuck me. Really. But yeah, that's brutal. I can't like imagine, you know, wanting kids so bad and not being able to have them. You could always adopt. There's plenty of kids that need adoption, but it kind of sucks that you can't like have. There's a difference between adopting. Well, and they having will, your but it'll be more, so much science involved. Yeah. now. I've been yeah. trying to get adopted since my mommy Brutal. died. I tried to adopt you to re start your whole <laughs> yes childhood, but yeah. you don't want to play. That's a, a reset button on you the holidays. You couldn't handle my rules anyway. I know. I, just, I know. <laughs> I know. It's not going to yeah, work. You're gonna. You get kicked out of the house before you turn your new birth date of two. You'd be kicked out of my house. What are we gonna do? Uh, next up is the 49ers decline to pick up the options for Pierre Garçon and Au revoir. Earl Mitchell. Um, as we all know, Garçon had back-to-back -back injury-plagued seasons while only giving us a glimpse of his upside in the first half of 2017. And um, declining his option actually leaves the team with a $7.2 million cap hit and dead money. That's a lot. And we only saved $1 million in cap space by getting rid of him. So this definitely wasn't a... Uh, uh, money move by any means. This was a performance and age move, and uh, that was that. We didn't really save any money by getting rid of Garcon. It was just we got to get younger. Au revoir. He uh, didn't get it done, Steve. Earl Mitchell, um, typical average starting defensive tackle journeyman, and while he was here, he filled his role on the unit while DJ Jones got some more experience watching him from the sideline. On the unit. And uh, – DJ Jones, in the meantime, got limited game reps, but towards the end of this past season, uh, DJ appeared to be a clear upgrade over Earl Thomas, and uh, not only play-wise, but age and financial-wise, and we saved $3 million in cap space by letting Mitchell go, and lately there have been new reports stating that we were trying to trade him. I don't know what they're thinking in there. Like, I don't know how you view Earl Mitchell as a tradable asset. A uh, seventh rounder or something. We only have six picks, so anything we get. True. Yeah, they're just trying to get some bodies in the building. I guess, yeah. I don't know. I don't see anybody biting on Earl Mitchell. Sorry, I think you're going to end up cutting him. Giants might throw something for him. They just uh, traded Olivier Vernon. That was huge for them to get him off the books. Fuck yeah, that. and well, that might be another thing, too. Like Somebody might take him just to dump something else and get the draft pick out of it. You know, who knows? What, what you what's like you got a big segment going here? Or what can I can I talk you, a sidetrack a little go bit ahead. about football question Please. here? Are you like let's talk about being you know, we're football fans. Are we fucking fed up like the Patriots? I mean, like where do you stand with it? Like, is it enough already? What oh, it's we... been enough. It's absolutely been enough. Yeah. yeah. That that's that that right there is millennium thinking. Hating the winner. 
I mean, it's not the that's winner. Puss, that's it, pussy it, behavior. It's, no, it's Get like, better and beat him. I agree, but when... I mean, Absolutely. Well, my question is, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? At some point, I, just, I can't... I gotta believe that no other team can put a run anything like this together. It's... Uh, it's I completely shocking. understand that what, what I'm watching, I'm probably never gonna watch again in Good. my life. Fuck. Just the level of dominance over that period of time. I mean... I obviously wasn't old enough to see our historic 20-year run. But, I mean, even w- comparing what they're doing now co- to what the Niners did in the 80s and 90s, I mean, did they pass the, what the Niners did? Yeah, I would, for sure. Yeah, yeah, they've played in yeah, more sure. Super Bowls. They've won and the, more. Just the, there's just the conference championships in a row. Yeah. What, just that eight, alone. Eight in a row? Eight oh, I think times? it's like 13. No, not that many. But the, they might have done like five, four in a row, and then I oh, think man. the one year where Brady got hurt, or, or the Jets beat him one year, and Sanchez got to the conference. But just absolutely insane. You, you got to count on that, Chris? How many conference championships in a row the Patriots were in? I don't know if that, if that thing can handle I don't think that can. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's not bad. It's I, not bad. I, I will say um, I, I did not mind watching the Rams just lay a fucking egg on, on – TV. Yeah. Well, first of all, first of all, let's address the fact that everyone in this room decided to root for a fucking division rival over the Patriots. That's a fucking <laughs> cunt move. You don't root for a fucking division team. What is that? You guys are fucking high. I was. How many wins are showing? Just how many in a row they've been in? Eight. All right. No. <laughs> Good call, Steve. Let me check. Good call. That was your number, right? You said eight. Yeah, it was. I said eight. Well played. Um. I don't give a fuck. There's no excuse to root for a division team. No excuse. Zero. When the bullets were flying, I got to say, I did, when, the, when the game kicked off, I was pretty neutral. And then once it started going, I was like, all right, I don't want to see the Rams win. I didn't watch one fucking, I, not one second. And like, okay, let's, let's, let's take it back a couple levels. All things considered, I will never root for a team that's in our division. Period. Period. Unless there was some way it was going to benefit the 49ers, right? And sure, they're down a, maybe one pick in the draft order. That's not a big benefit. No, not at all. I don't care about that. But like if, if it meant like the other team some, somehow, I, don't, I, don't, I can't think of Well, the scenario, scenario I came up with I thought was a pretty logical Yeah, one. but that's not real. That's, you hope that there's a hangover. Right. That's not a real thing that is guaranteed. No, absolutely not. Like if there not. was a guaranteed benefit for us, then I'm in. You can get me in. Right. I, I'll take it. But I can't think of a scenario where that's the case. Now, just that alone would have me rooting for the other team. Unless it was someone that I hated a lot. And I can't think of an NFL team. I mean, the Giants is probably the next team that we hate the most after our division. And I would still rather the Giants than anyone in our division. See, I I can't stand the Patriots. I'm over it. I'm that's done. dumb because they gave us fucking Jimmy G. That makes no sense at all. Fuck them. What's so what? They're fucking ignorant. Fuck them. <laughs> that, that makes zero sense. They gave us our franchise quarterback, which saved us from getting Kirk Cousins, first of all. Let's go back a level. Yeah, that, Kirk Cousins would be our franchise quarterback if it wasn't for the Patriots. So you can say all you want about Shanahan and Lynch and you're not sold and the Patriots. We would have Kirk Cousins as our franchise quarterback right now. See, my gripe isn't with the Patriots. My gripe is with Patriots fans. I cannot fucking yeah. stand them. That's just because where we live, I think. Yeah, it's got to be because where we live. Be- well, well, and not only that, but any team that wins that much, the fans are going to be like that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, if we win one Super Bowl, nobody's going to want to be friends with me that's not a 49er fan. Uh, I mean, yeah, let's be real. Uh, agreed. And Same no, with me. Uh, you, not yeah. a single person is going to want to be in a fucking, in the state with him. Now imagine the winning six win championships Forget in the last it. 18 Look, years. We're going to be the biggest cunts ever. We'll be yeah. way worse than Patriots fans. Worse I'll than the offseason? I promise you. <laughs> We will be worse than Patriots fans <laughs> if we are remotely close to that. If yeah, if you if the 49ers started this year and put a run together, that's half of what the Patriots just did. Half. Half. just one Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Get out of my fuck it. You don't even you You'll be yelling out of your car at anyone in any NFL gear ever. If I'm in a if I my wife and I go to Stop and Shop like four or five times a week, we go to Stop and Shop like every night after work, right? And if I see people all the time with just like Vikings hat on, just per se or a fucking Lions jersey. You don't think that I'm going to be like, hey, cunt, what's up? Yeah. I'll, I'll drop my pants and show them the Niner tattoo yeah, on my thighs. We would be like, way worse than any Yeah, no. It's got to be just because we live here that that's, 
That's oh, hundred percent. I see. I don't care about Jets fans that much because they haven't Cow- won anything. Cowboys ever. Cowboys fans are way worse than Patriots fans. Yes, they Period. are. Cowboys fans are pretty bad. Well, that Mexican in Arizona yeah, should pretty die. Pretty interchangeable. The, the fans. Yeah. Cowboys and Patriots. I mean, th- I don't see the fans. Like I said, I despise Belichick. I just I think he's a fucking dick. He's just a dick. He just. He doesn't. Uh, he's a bad person, I think, and uh, I just, I just don't think that he. See, I, th- I, I think don't think he's he, great. I see. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's great. I think he's a great football mind, and I, he's a great football coach. But Bill Belichick, the human, I think is. He's like a shit stain, an asshole. Like, uh, th- no, that's in- just what he shows the media. Well, good, fuck him. And man. I love how condescending he is towards yeah. the media. It's yeah. hilarious, for sure. But anybody that's ever played for him says that he's not like that at all. That's he's just like that in front of the media. It's, yeah. it's just envy. It's just like when the Yankees were on their run. Yeah, everyone hated any team in all of baseball. The fans hated the Yankees because they were they were the team. That's how it goes. Mm, pussy farts. Pussy fart. Uh, it's just going to make it that much sweeter, especially when they, we beat them for our Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, even sweeter. When Jimmy G beats Tom Brady for a Super Bowl. Do you know what beautiful. I'm Do you know what I'm going to do that night? I'm going to the second I'm sure you're not going to be worse than a Patriot fan, right? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the second the game ends, I'm going to jump in my car wherever I am and I'm going to drive straight to Foxborough Stadium. I'm going to break in. I'm going to jerk off on a 50-yard line. That's what I'm doing. It should be easy to get into Fox <laughs> yeah. Stadium after the Patriots lose a Super Bowl to the 49ers. There probably won't be any security there. You think? No. No, be wide open. You can walk right in. <laughs> Might I suggest you learn to skydive because that's probably your best. <laughs> I've skydived. And like halfway down, you could get started so that like right when you land, you finish <laughs> off. That's probably your best bet of making this happen. <laughs> Man, man, man. You t- <laughs> not Dude. only learning how to skydive, but jerk off while skydiving. With that, wind, <laughs> with that wind, too, you're not going to have any lubrication. It's going to be that February. That wind going to dry it up. Yeah. You, it takes some real concentration to jerk off while skydiving. In I'm, February. I'm sure it's been done, but that's some fucking, that's impressive. Real That cold. might be more impressive than a Super Bowl win. Yeah. Yeah. So that when he lands, he completes. It's gonna to have to be a like t- lands of the fifty. It's gonna to have to be. A, it's gonna to have to be a tandem dive. Let's be for real. <laughs> so when you think about that, maybe we, maybe what we dude get, you gonna have strapped? To I'm thinking maybe we get some assistance <laughs> here, one way or the other. You know, we'll work it out. Possibly more impressive than sucking a dick for a Super Bowl. <laughs> Possibly jerking off while skydiving in February for a Super Bowl, or getting pegged while doing it. Yeah. All right. So moving on, we franchise. Franchise tagged a kicker. What, a black guy? No, we signed him. Oh. We franchise tagged Robbie Gold. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, well, we after, got to, we got to talk about both these. I, I actually don't even know his name. I forgot to put him on the list. The black kicker. That's Chris, it. get on it. What do you need? The black New kicker. 49ers kicker. He's black. Um, <laughs> the constant vibe since the uh, end of the season was that Robbie Gold was considering returning to Chicago Jonathan after their. Brown. What's his name? Jonathan Brown. Jonathan Brown. He's got blonde hair, dyes it blonde. He's got a, a, a blonde patch, front, right? Front left uh, section of his hair. Yeah, of course he does. Okay. Yeah, what's up with him, Steve? Why did we sign a kicker? Oh, just another guy. Yeah. An yeah. extra leg to, to take some of the heat off of gold? Hair. Yeah, I don't know. We've got a two year deal. Like a, like, a, like a fake Hoda but Beckham hair. How do we carry him? It's my concern. We don't. He'll be, released he, he'll be around during training camp and then he'll be gone. Oh, so why sign him to a two year deal? And money, there's some sort of um, some, I, I something in the you. background that I don't know how it affects that it affects. So weird. They're probably just getting a look at a guy. It's probably a scam. Like, if I want to only give you $500,000, I say it's two years in a million, and you're like, ooh, two years in a million, and then I'm like, fuck you, you ain't going to be back here the second year. It's entirely possible that this is the last year that we even have Robbie Gold yeah. on the franchise tag, and then we're going to let him go next year. Or heaven forbid something happens so, to Gould. Now you've maybe got this you guy for two years maybe you could, one. Maybe yeah. you could practice squad this guy too. Maybe mm, t- you would never really use a practice squad spot on a kicker. That'd be a big waste. Not but like if, not if he's got a leg. No, I mean no, if he's that good, I would bet you that there's not a kicker on any practice squad in the NFL. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Then he, I would bet money that there's. If not. he's good enough to be on your practice squad, he's good enough your to be your guys starter. Are, yeah. And I also the, the two year thing is probably like. Somebody has done a risk analysis, and if Gould gets hit by a car 
and this guy has a fucking phenomenal year, and we only have him for one year. It's going to cost us a shitload to resign him. It's better to just give him the two years and then cut him. Yeah, yeah right? maybe, then maybe somehow if they cut him, and then if no one signs him, and then God forbid Gold Gould died, they could just somehow maybe bring him back because he would still be under con- Maybe bring you know, Gould back from the dead. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Prop him up. Weekend at Robbie. Be phenomenal. I have a feeling that this is going to be the last year we have Robbie Gold. Yeah, because he's a fucking twat. It who wants to go back to fucking. It depends. Shy if we uh, make the NFC Championship and look like a Super Bowl contender the next year, he might stay to get his ring. Maybe you never know. All that changes a lot of shit. Yeah, all the reports were stating that we were working on a, a long term commitment to him, and they like weren't even in the same ballpark as far as figures go. And he might change if we, you know, get there. Yeah, but. Um, Jimmy it's, G better come out and fuck someone. And getting right franchise there. for a guy like that is good too, because now if he gets it a second time, it's more like it's always yeah, it's it's fucking phenomenal. Like I saw people hating on the fact that we franchise tagged a kicker, like our own fans. Just I would just no way. I think it's a great like, move. It's, it's brilliant. But absolutely, yeah, like he's making. Uh, you're paying Robbie Gold four million. Well, the Bears are paying their fucking jo- uh, jerk off that just missed how many kicks. Three million. Yeah. So and, and Robbie Gold missed what t- three field goals in two seasons? Like yeah. get the motherfuck out of here. Give the and guy fifteen million a year. I don't give well, a don't fuck. And he's super, I don't know about that. He'll but. be super motivated to do good because he knows he's going to be a free agent or get a good deal. Like yeah, it, it's motivation. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, get it up. There's so many games that come down to a kicker at the end. If you have one that's clutch. You yeah. just got to make him the highest paid kicker. That's just the bottom line. And and the highest paid kicker is five million. So you could pay three million for dog shit, or you could pay five million for the best of the best. It's really not it, as far as market value goes. It it makes complete sense to pay your kicker. Uh, injury updates on Jimmy G and Jarek McKinnon. They're both running, um, and both of them are on schedule to be full participants in OTAs, and Shanahan was particularly surprised with Jimmy's rehab and stated he was ahead of schedule. Uh, a lot of writers have noted the relationship between Jimmy and uh, McKinnon throughout this experience that they're going through together and Jets' injury occurring three weeks before Jimmy's. It's actually not that surprising that Jimmy may have just naturally accelerated his recovery simply by trying to keep up with him because hmm. they're doing the same shit every day. You think they've shared a woman? They might have. <laughs> Porn star? Maybe. See, even Baby thought that was funny. (laughs) But I expect a full return of Jimmy by the time the season starts. OTAs. Okay, let me ask you. Yeah. Is full return to 5 0 Jimmy the first year? Or. I'm not predicting. 1 2. I'm not predicting record. I'm predicting. No, I want to know what Jimmy, because it was two different people I saw. Not You're really two know. different people. No. We had we. There, I love this. I love it. I love. I even talked about this yesterday. <laughs> You're just gonna walk right into it every time. <laughs> you really think he? All he sees is one and two and five and up. I know. If Jimmy G threw one touchdown and four hundred interceptions, and we won every like game. Richard Sherman made four hundred and one <laughs> interceptions, and we and won. We won yeah. That's the guy he wants. That's it. That's it. It doesn't matter, Steve. He won. It doesn't matter. Uh, we, I predict week one Jimmy to be come out of the gates and immediately be a top ten quarterback. Who, who, who do they play week one? They have schedule didn't come out yet. Who do you, you think? don't know? Where's your psychic yeah. powers? Steve? Who do you think? Steve? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you know, somebody out here and we're there. Yeah, you know the games. Who do you think? Just you know the teams. Take a, take a shot in the dark. The... <laughs> I, I I I don't know. It's usually not a divisional game. I'll, I'll go there. Okay. Week one is usually not a divisional You're game. Right. It's usually the Packers. Packers. But uh, we don't play the Packers. Panthers. Uh, we had the Vikings one year, week so one. We can go week one and be warm instead of having to go to some winter-ass game. Yeah. Actually, uh, we talked about maybe going to Cincinnati. I will never forget that game that him and I went to for the rest of my life. Never. What, in New England? I'd never forget that. That was the, one of the worst weather games I've ever been to. It, it, what made it fun, there's so many things that made it great, yeah. but what made it great was it was such a dumb decision to go. <laughs> like, the worst weather, everything about it. It's New England. They're not going to win in New England. And then they fucking win. Everything yeah. about it. And then... The, how the game unfolded the, was absolutely insane. The roller coaster insane. of emotions, the fact that not only did they start winning, but they were blowing them out at home. Like, it was disgusting. Yeah. 
It and was... then they blew the lead. Yes. And still won. And then Crabtree Amazing. at the end. Amazing. Coming through in the clutch with Joe in the, the stands. Things. I bet. No, we were we were like three quarters of the way out of the stadium. I bet your dick yeah. got so hard when Crabtree did that, he probably could have sucked it from the field. Uh, it was like six degrees, and there was no way anybody's dick was going to Yeah, it was... Zero percent. Your dick might have been hard, but it was up inside of you hard. I was allegedly just like, like just shoving Viking in my mouth every 30 <laughs> seconds because it was so cold. But um, everything about it was phenomenal. I mean, we bought tickets in the parking lot illegally up the police station. Um, I drove home in the slush. It was sketchy. It was a good time. Well, getting back to the the Jimmy conversation, I believe that on Jimmy's worst day, he's a top 12 quarterback. On his best day, he's a top three quarterback. What day are you going to get? No matter On his worst day, you, you're still in a position to win the game, and that's the kind of guy that you need. Okay. And he's only played 10 games. He's barely... This season was so disappointing because he was supposed to finish his development, and it didn't happen. The good news, if you're looking for silver lining, is by all accounts, he's a guy that doesn't take time off. He's a studier. He's a fan of the game. He's a guy that watches video. So even though he hasn't been physically playing this year, he's been learning more about the system and more just learning Mm -hmm. more. So it can only help. I'll say this. He's played 10 games in the NFL... Seven of them, he looked elite. The scary... P- Two of them, he looked okay, and one of them, he looked bad. The The scary part is that not only did he have the knee injury with us, but the injury with the Patriots. Yeah, the shoulder. And it, it, it's a little scary. But he talked about that, too. He said, it's this is, this is so unreal because I grew up playing football all my life, and I never got hurt once, and I get in the league, and I get two chances to be get, become the guy or have a chance to fill in for the guy, and I got hurt both times. Oh. It's like not something that... Navarro Bowman didn't have an injury history either, but look what happened. Until he did, yeah. You know? Watching football is fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not paying us right now, those dicks. Fuck they ain't getting them. shit. I like how they keep sending scripts. Yeah, yeah like we're going to yeah, do them for free. Yeah, Kevin Aguilera, keep sending them, you mark-ass bitch. <laughs> Fucking trick. I fucked your hoe. <laughs> All right. Fuck, fuck him. Another uh, injury update. DJ Reed actually <laughs> suffered a torn labrum, and uh, he underwent sh- shoulder surgery. Who? DJ Reed, our oh. rookie from last year that actually played really well down the stretch at nickel corner. How would he hurt himself? I, I don't know. Um, Wait, during the football year or during the Yes, off-season? during the football oh. year. Why do you just have surgery now? I don't. <coughs> well, he underwent shoulder surgery in late January, oh. and he'll Still. likely miss OTAs but be ready to return for training camp. It hasn't been confirmed when the injury occurred or how long he's been dealing with it, but... Um, that's odd, right? It is very odd. Like, we didn't hear anything about it during the season. And if it happened outside of football, we would have heard about that. Because right, that's always a big story when people get especially with what's going on with Patrick Mahomes, how, like, he got his team told him to stop playing basketball. Did you see that? No. Oh, yeah, Mahomes, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and somebody else was doing something. They they put they tried putting res- another player. Yeah, I think uh, somebody else uh, was a big surfer. And they said, yeah, no, you're not surfing. surfing. Remember the Steelers tried to stop Roethlisberger? Oh, it was uh, from Mariota. Riding his, riding his motorcycle? <laughs> oh, I don't remember that one. Yeah. yeah, they tried to stop him from riding a motorcycle. Yeah, Mariota can't surf. Really? Yeah. Why? Who gets hurt surfing? He get well, fucked up. Yeah, people? but, I mean... If you're yeah. surfing near, like, a coral reef uh, or something, you get fucking fuck shark up. eats you? Up. I don't know that shark eating is a... Or bites your leg off. It's real. It's real. It I mean, you don't have to die, but... It's not a high percentage. I think but. your NFL career is pretty much over. Yeah, I mean, if I got oh, millions and millions of dollars invested in you, I don't care how slim the chance is. I don't want you doing it. Yeah. No, it totally makes sense. Yeah. Ah, man. It's fucked up. So last year, DJ Reed was the rookie we drafted, and they came out and said they want to play him at safety. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's not a safety. He's a nickel corner. Try him at safety. He failed. Then they put him at nickel corner. He flourished. So as of right now, it's going to be between him and Kawan Williams next year for nickel corner. And they're both showed to be very solid players when they're healthy. Who signed Eric Weddle or Weddle or whatever? Rams. That's right. He's done. I think that's a great – that's good. Fuck him. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, maybe he's he has one old, good year left. He's an old white guy. He ain't doing shit. Uh, Trent Taylor is fully recovered from his back in- issues. And he hangs out with the boys a lot. He they does. Ha- they hang out together all the time. Um, after undergoing back surgery to unpinch a nerve before the 2018 season, 
he literally produced a half of his tw- uh, 2017 rookie season's output, and it was reported throughout the season that Taylor had lost some of his quickness and explosion in his lower body, which is pretty much his greatest asset as his pl- as a player is his explosiveness and quickness in his in his feet and his legs. Yeah, he had like baby legs, but they moved so quick. But I guess he he suffered nerve damage from the uh, from the back surgery, and he had some rehab to go through last season, which explains why he really just didn't play much, or when he did play, didn't do much at all. But he says that he's back to 100% now, and um, he said he couldn't really fully recover while the season was going on, but now that he's had time away, he's been able to finally fully recover. So hopefully next year we get the Trent Taylor that we saw in his rookie year. If not, he could fuck off. I mean, pinched nerve is a pretty serious injury, and we've seen how many guys come back from an injury, and right away they're not where they were. Yeah. And then they, you know, we saw it with Crabtree, we saw it with Bowman, we we saw it with, uh, I was just thinking of someone else, but it happened, Sherman, we've seen it with, and then eventually they get back to where they were. Yeah. I mean, if he can get back to where he was, and we get the full potential out of Pettis. Yeah. We don't need another fucking wide receiver. Well, if he doesn't get back to where he was, Richie James is nipping out his heels. He looked really good last year as a slot receiver. Pettis, I, I now I, I follow all of Pettis and his sisters and the whole his whole weird little world. And uh, but he he's working all off season. He's working hard. He's a strange guy, isn't he? He is real fucking weird. I mean, let's not forget we moved up into the third round to get him. So second, we, we, I mean, in the second. So yeah. we see him as yeah. our number one. And, but yeah. no, he or at least. Potential to become. Potential or I mean, two. for whatever it's worth, he is. Wor- he appears to be working hard, you know. And so. his his skill set is perfect opposite Marquise Goodwin. Yeah. And do uh, we have a clock on this episode? I'm sorry. I, okay. What lit a fire under him this season was when Shanahan yelled at him mm-hmm. in that. Uh, I think it was the Oakland game. Mm-hmm. And then he went for like five touchdowns. And then ever and since that game, game he went something. off. Yeah. Oh, imagine he has a, a sophomore year like uh, Kittle. Right. Oof. Oh well, that would. I, I think that's expecting I just a little meant, much. I don't mean th- to that level. I just mean like the breakout. Of, yeah. Like the the improvement. Like that was the one where he went. Okay, he's there. He's a yeah. pro. And uh, the knock on Pettis, a lot of the knock on him was that he he's got uh, a lean build and he's got to put on some muscle mass. And a lot of guys don't really get to do that until after their first year because their rookie year they're training for the combine, which is not football activity really. So a lot of them can't really bulk up until after the rookie year. So we'll see. He's what obsessed looks like. with this burger place. It's called like Born and Brews, and they have bur- and he goes there like eight times a week. It's crazy. Cool. Good story. Wow. So he's eating burgers. <laughs> is what I'm saying. All right. Uh, so what is that? <laughs> Uh, Weston Richburg, uh, knee and quad injuries. He underwent surgery in late January, and he will likely miss OTAs, but is expected to be ready to go for training camp. Uh, it was reported that the injury initially occurred in the first quarter of week four, but he played through the injury and started 15 games. His play this season certainly left a lot to be desired based on his price tag because we paid him like yeah. as one of the best centers and in the league. Center, yeah. And he's a veteran center, and... Uh, according to PFF, he allowed 23 hurries, which was third most among centers this year. Granted, he played Aaron Donald twice, so that might throw the numbers off a little bit. But he obviously needs to improve from last year. But I didn't think he was a train wreck. I mean, we weren't coming in every single week bashing the dude. No. And if he's they, playing through injury. They, no, I read something today that said, who's the guy they just re-signed? Persons. Yeah, Mike Person. That he has the most experience out of any of the offensive linemen in, in a Kyle Shanahan offensive line. For I guess maybe he's been with him before, prior. Oh, really? I, apparently. Huh. And they were saying that maybe he should step into that position, but then it begs the question, who should step in at right guard? And this article said that it should be, or whoever oh, wrote absolutely this. absolutely not. Who? Well, Weston Richburg is the center. Well, I, I don't know. I'm just telling you. What Can this. you find that and send it to me? I'm very interested by it now. And then they were saying Garnett should step in to where oh, please. person's foot. I got to see it to believe Great. it at this point. That's a person that gets paid to write. Yeah. That's not something and I that's came up with. That's what they fucking wrote. That's not something I came How up with. How fucking amazing is that? Oh, I believe you. That's uh, yeah. a paid NFL I don't have 49ers like that. writer. Guaranteed. It's someone that follows the 49ers and it's their job to write about the 49ers. And that's the fucking take they have on the fucking NFL. Well, anyway, Amazing. yeah, uh, Western Richburg played through an injury pretty much the entire year last year, and um, I think that the the sky's still the limit for him. I mean, Kyle Shanahan saw something in him the same way he saw something in Alex Mack 
which he recruited from Cleveland to go to Atlanta, and Alex Mack became the best center in the NFL with Kyle Shanahan in Atlanta. It's also like everything affects these ratings that you can't really tell. Like he's got these quarterback hurries on his record, Mm -hmm. right? But the quarterback wasn't our starting quarterback most of the year, so he he is going to be different. And also, defenses are going to rush different. Yes. Like, if Jimmy G's back there, you've got to worry more about what he's going to do with the ball than if anyone else is back there. So it changes. Everything changes so much. It's it's wild. Like, like even when Kaepernick is quarterback, you're going to rush more because he's less likely to throw it and more likely to run it. Yep. Like, all that changes all that stuff that you have no control over if you're Weston Richburg. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't a train wreck, but no. he wasn't, like, out there mauling, dude. So I think that if he gets, if he gets his knee in his quad right, then he gets back to his former self, which was... In New York, he was one of the better centers in the league, and he's still young. I think he's only 25 years old. But even like, like, so he gets hurries is the number, right? So, but if your quarterback's release time is half of the other quarterback, you're going to have less hurries, and you didn't do anything different. Right. And it also depends on who you're playing. There's only only three teams that play Aaron Donald twice, and that's who he's facing up against. We should say that the player's name that died was Cedric Hardman. Cedric Hardman. Correct. All right. Why should we say that? Because we, he, he was a good guy. You didn't even know his fucking name. How do you know he was a good guy? Because he leads I, nine. I, I, I would, I'm <laughs> going to go even further. I'm going to go even further. How old was this man? Uh, 70. I would be willing to bet thousands of dollars that he beat women. I would be willing to bet thousands of dollars because he's 70 and he was an NFL player that he hit at least one woman. Hey. And he was not a good guy. <laughs> Leads Niners all the time. I'm not saying sex. he was, allegedly. I'm just saying I would if you had to put me on one side or the other and I had to bet money, I bet he hit a woman. <laughs> Leads the Niners all the time in sex. I'm gonna go with him. He's all right in my Probably mind. beats women. Used to. Now he's dead. That's why he's dead. Well, actually. Allegedly. All right. Another injury <laughs> that we didn't know about during the season. Um Garrett Selleck played uh most of the season. We with knew. A broken thumb. We knew. He played like a twat all year. Following the season, he did get surgery, and he's expected to be ready for OTAs. No, you know what? Good for him. Good for him. You know who should take a lesson from him? Who? Garnett. <laughs> I was going there. This that. guy This guy. Played, <laughs> this guy played with a broken thumb, and, he, and his job is catching the ball. Thank you, Steve. I agree with you. But it occurred in week three, and he only missed one game all season in week 17, and that was due to a concussion. He, um, he's a champion. Uh, uh, 2017... Champion. 2017, the end of 2017, especially when Jimmy came in, Selleck time started, and he started scoring all these touchdowns for us. And then with one hand, one thumb, he did it. No, thumb he had two thumbs. He had two thumbs that year. Oh, but he had one thumb this year, and Selleck time never happened. Nah. So it's one uh, thumb. Um, with the one thumb, Johnny. It was put on hold for nearly the whole season due to multiple factors. But I think the biggest factor is the fact that George Kittle is the best <coughs> tight end in the NFL. I think that was the biggest factor to Garrett Selleck being a non-factor anymore. Can I ask you a question? What? Since the season's ended, how many orgasms have you had where George Kittle was your number one thought? <laughs> None. I don't believe that. Do you? Hmm. It, it see, it's a strange feeling because I'd, we've gone. I'd like to ask his wife the same question. Yeah. Let's just see what goes. I bet he's got a poster above the bed. Yeah. Like Kittle. It's possible. The it's, one-handed touchdown. When do you get the jersey? I haven't got one yet. I haven't gotten a single jersey. I, I was going to get Garoppolo last year, and then he tore his ACL. I'm like, well, uh, I can put that purchase on hold for another year. I got it. Go, who gets the Kittle? I don't know. Not Joe, hopefully. I'll get my kid a Kittle. I haven't gotten a jersey yet. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. It's a weird... I don't know if you guys feel the same as me. It's a weird feeling because we've gone five years with players that barely belong in the NFL, let alone yeah, it's tough stars. To buy so now we have George Kittle... And I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around the fact that he is the best tight end in the NFL. And, and like, he's the shit. I don't think it's really sunk in yet. Hopefully he doesn't have a shit year next year. I I don't think so. I don't either. Teams had all year to stop him. They won't have the same year because now everyone knows what they're playing against. They should have known last year. It's not like he just came on late. Yeah, it's not the same. Hey, oh, I have a question about a wide receiver. Or or we'll talk about that next episode. Yeah, next episode we'll go over all the free agency and and draft stuff. Uh, Gary Gilliam released. We saved roughly $5 million in cap space uh, by cutting Gary Gilliam, which is an absolute no-brainer. He's a backup swing tackle. He could fuck off and die. Uh, There were some serious changes to the training staff. 
Um, the 49ers fired strength and conditioning coach Ray Wright and head of athletic tra- head athletic trainer Jeff Ferguson. How do you say heads had to roll after the last two seasons? They did roll. And John Lynch, this is a quote from him. Following a thorough evaluation, we have determined that now is the right time for a reboot in the, re- in the structure and protocols of our health and performance areas. And it was reported that the 49ers consulted with a number of franchises, including the Warriors, about how they run their performance and training department. Um, the main concept or the main reports that they got back was that they kind of coincide with one another, whereas the 49ers, their strength and conditioning co- uh, program and the athletic training program were kind of like separate entities. And I guess that's that's a, that's a no good. You got to kind of combine them and, and have them be cohesive with each other. You would think. I was Googling his name to see if he got another job. Uh, Ray, Ray, Ray Wright, Wright yeah, and he didn't get another Jeff job. Ferguson. Because I wanted to see like... He's with us for if a long time. We could track time. another team, like if he went to them, and no. then they had a rash of injuries. Right. He's gonna go to some college, and in six years from now, we'll hear about him. He was playing touch pee pee with the with the students. Mark my words. He didn't look like a pee pee toucher. Eh, you'll see. But we ultimately hired Ben People Peterson. People are bad at their jobs. Touch pee pees. As head of player and health performance, his history includes working with numerous sports franchises. Over the past five to six years, and he's most known for his data and analytical approach regarding weekly practice loads and preventing soft tissue injuries. So he has a a, a whole analytical database saying that if you if your players practice X amount of hours, their output is going to be X amount, but less injury. Yeah. So um, he did a study that every single team. Or, or six out of the last seven Stanley Cup champions were the healthiest team in the league. So, and he also looked at how they practiced that year, and the common thread with all those teams is that they practice less than most of the other teams in the league. The Rams. The Rams are known for sitting guys. They're known for not playing guys when they're already they in. Didn't, they sat out the whole preseason. Look what happened. Well, God, look at even Joe Staley gets a lot of practice time off, and it works for him. You know what I mean? Well, that's just because he's a veteran, though. No, I know, but it's another example of it. This guy sounds like a real fucking nerd, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> a real go getter. <laughs> that definitely, one. definitely getting flushed down the fucking toilet in the fucking locker room. <laughs> fucking dork. Uh, at six point four hours is peak performance. Shut the fuck up. He'll definitely be applying icy hot to men's fucking grundles. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, big loss of the offseason was the loss of Rich Scangarillo. <clears throat> uh, we initially blocked Rich Scangarillo from interviewing with Denver, who was trying to fill their offensive coordinator vacancy. And, and as you guys know, my initial reaction was, that's strange given the fact that Elway allowed his top personnel scout, Adam Peters, to join John Lynch back in 2017 when he didn't have to. And yet we go and block mm. him from... There must have been something there because they eventually let him and then he the, got the job. We eventually... There must have been something something going on there. So thinking back to 2017, Jimmy credited his fast readiness after the trade went down to mainly to Rich Scangarillo working with him night and day to get him ready to play. And um, Scangarillo was also credited for the discovery and development of Nick Mullins. The, the Mullins one means more to me mm-hmm. than the... Jimmy G one because so let's say you're a not even a quarterback coach let's say you're like an offensive assistant coach for any team in the NFL and they hire a new quarterback that needs to get up to speed are you saying you wouldn't spend every hour possible to help him learn it like well I don't you're think, just a shitty coach if you wouldn't do that no I don't think it's like an emphasis on like he worked X amount of hours which makes him a good coach I think it was more so like. He was he worked tirelessly and he was really good at his job. Yeah, that's fair. I think it was a combination of but the But like two. to me, it's to me that's more of a that speaks more to Jimmy. Yeah, because he didn't have to do that. You know, like you got to be a quarterback coach in the NFL by working hard. You didn't get there by putting your feet up and taking days off. I think the fact that we've heard Scangarello is highly regarded in the facility by all the quarterbacks by by Kyle well, Shanahan, Shanahan brought him in, and the fact that. We initially blocked him from leaving. I think him just leaving in general is a huge loss. But we ultimately hired uh, Shane Day as our quarterback coach, and he spent the past three seasons as the Dolphins' tight end coach. 
Gee, who saw that coming? Unfucking believable. Dude, it's just, it's the most consistent aspect of this fucking podcast. <laughs> it's your inability to turn your phone off before we start. Who, who has their phone on Audible anyway? So anyway, what kind of fucking savages yeah. are you two? What the fuck kind of lives do you live? What the hell did I do? I have uh, you're to part say. of that gang. <laughs> just, <laughs> that I'm just lumped in. Audible phone gang. It's just fucking weirdos. I feel like Chris did it once, though. <laughs> well, yeah. somehow I'm got, like every time. Yeah. You're just the worst human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> probably in line at the DMV. It's a little harsh. You're you're probably in line at the DMV FaceTiming with your wife. I saw a guy in Home Depot on speakerphone walking down the aisle talking to his phone. Oh, I, like hate it. Out. I hate it. I want to kill people. What is wrong with you? I fucking want, like, I hate you. I want to put a knife and right then, through you. And then I had the opposite. I was standing on the sidewalk in front of the shop on my phone, and a guy was walking up. And out loud, yelling to the guy behind me. Like he couldn't wait till he walked past me, and he saw me. And I just looked at him with a face like, "Are you even a fucking human? Like, who does that?" <laughs> People fucking, I fucking hate them. I hate you all. So crazy. So anyway, Shane Day uh, does have quarterback coach experience with the Bears from 2010 and 2011, and he was also with the 49ers from 2007 to 2009 as an offensive quality control coach. I don't think the offense was uh, high quality in 07 to 09. He did a great job. Yeah, but that's our quarterback coach now. Right. Two Murray's. Defensive back coach Jeff Halfley. Leaves and goes to Ohio State, and we end up hiring Joe Woods as our new defensive backs coach and passing game coordinator. Um, he, Jeff Halfley, reportedly turned down an interview. He had already left us to go to Ohio State as a co DC, so he's sharing the DC label with another guy. And he turned down an interview for the Cincinnati Bengals defensive coordinator hmm. position. How insane is that? That's weird. You're sharing defensive coordinator role with somebody in college, and you're turning down an NFL interview to be the guy. Maybe it's like a Brokeback Mountain scenario. <laughs> Maybe. I didn't think about that. That's why you're here. Sometimes I wonder why you're here. In every single episode, you give me a reason. But um, That's it. Our, new, uh, our new DB coach, Joe Woods, comes with 25-plus years of experience coaching defensive backs, and his, back, his best work is actually from 2015 – the Super Bowl champion Denver Broncos, he was the defensive backs coach, and they had a somewhat historic defensive unit that year, specifically the that secondary. Tlaib, right? Uh, Tlaib, Chris Harris, Bradley Roby, all those guys. Hmm. Tlaibi. They, they, they dragged. Years. Imagine 25 years of coaching defensive, defensive backs, backs, and that's it. And how much has changed? Like that position cha- it's I changed. I looked at his wiki too. And usually a lot of guys you see like tight ends coach, quarterback coach, running back coach, they this yeah. guy was defensive backs coach, defensive wow. backs coach, like straight down the fucking line. He just that's what he knows. Hmm. So that's our dude now. And this one actually was an eyebrow raiser. We fired defensive line coach Jeff Scanina and we hired Chris Corrick. And the reason why I say it raised my eyebrows is that Matt Barrows reported that Scanina was not a big fan of Solomon Thomas. <laughs> and that would explain a much clearer picture regarding his inconsistent snap counts throughout the season. <laughs> and there were, if you recall, times last year, I specifically remember the Green Bay game where we needed to stop Rodgers to win the game, and Solomon Thomas wasn't out there, and... Uh, Shanahan made a mo- remark like, "Yeah, I want to see him out there in those situations." And That's we all number one pick. We all thought it. that was an indictment on Robert Sala. When in actuality, it was probably an indictment on the mm. defensive line coach because we fired him. You think they interviewed Thomas Sula for the position? I don't know. That would have been <laughs> great though. <laughs> but this guy didn't just leave. We fired him. Yeah, like that usually doesn't happen. Yeah. Usually, you let a guy go because yeah. he's got another opportunity. That um, that's one of the things you forget too when you when you give Thomas Sula the head coaching position, you actually lost him as a something he was good coach. at, something yep. he was actually good at. Um, well, the uh, Zganina, the guy we fought, uh, fired, he did improve the run stopping aspect from what we all remember the abysmal 2016 Chip Kelly year, historically bad run stopping unit. Now we got this new guy, Chris Couric. He spent the last season as Miami's defensive line coach, and he spent eight straight seasons in Detroit. And during his eight years with Detroit, his defensive line unit registered 250 sacks, which was the fourth most during that time span. Um, 
he plans to deploy a wide nine scheme along his front where the linemen are much more spread out and allows them more opportunities to win in space. And the combine weekend where Lynch and Shanahan had their pressers, they like brought him up numerous times unprovoked about how they excited they were to get him. Mm. Like he, they weren't even asked a question about him and they would just bring him up on their oh, own. Oh boy. So that's what's going on there. Oh, rep. Okay. Is it time already? Oh, fuck yeah, Poppy. All right. Well, a uh, number of the... I, I could just stop here and then save the rest for next one. Donezo. Wrap it up. Email us if you even are listening at goldbloodedpodcast at gmail.com. Um, fuck my bookie. Do we even tell him to go to the Instagram? Why? Oh, yeah, maybe go to the Instagram. Wow. Yeah, he's harsh, isn't Steve. he? You know what makes here's here's what makes his condemnation of Curran the best. <laughs> Curran actually thought of content for the show and worked on it <laughs> and, and sent a message saying, "What do you think about this?" Steve didn't even have the fucking time to answer yeah, it, right. but had the time to call him out for his posting. The kid works for free. For free, because none of us, because none of us could find the time to make a post on Instagram. The fucking kid had to step up and do it, and Steve can't even reply to the kid's text message, but can call him out for not making posts often enough for Steve's liking in the off season. I'm putting my amazing. I'm co-signing. I'm co-signing. Hey, co- you, you go back to 2015, co-signing. 2016. I was running that shit. That's that right. Instagram but you was weren't when we bumping. had to get current. No, and, I got. Oh, and we could also go back to when I built the Instagram. We didn't even have one, but we, we all built it. But the I did, did nothing. We? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it was my idea from the start. I did. Well, nothing. it was your idea, and uh, you found the bot though. That's what, that changed the game. The bot changed oh, the game. Oh, 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 <laughs> Crab, what bot? Remember Crabtree? <laughs> 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 but uh, Crab no, Crab no tree? problem calling Curran out. <laughs> oh, Crabtree. <laughs> He might be coming back. You never know. Maybe. Because you know free agent. how hard my dick would get. <laughs> I would jerk publicly. To All be right. continued. Uh, <laughs> Great ending. Yeah. <laughs> We're out. <laughs>